we continue heading almost due south across the sound. Now the Long Island coast is clearly visible and Connecticut has dropped out of sight. Our course is taking us toward Matatuck Harbor on Long Island's north shore. The swells are higher, the wind stronger, and the bow pitches more as we cut through the seas. leaving a foamy trail behind in the glistening waves as the sun breaks through the overcast, brightening the water around us. Our ability to come and go from our mooring back in Connecticut is dependent on the tide and current. An unfavorable current presents a significant hazard, so we have to time our return in accordance with the tide. If we sail all the way to the Long Island shore, we won't be able to return to our mooring until tomorrow on the next favorable tide. We're now two-thirds of the way across the sound, Time to come about and head back toward Connecticut. Okay. About. The lead. My brother takes the helm, frees the tiller from its lash, and gives the command, Ready about! Helm's a lee! The first attempt is unsuccessful. She begins to fall into irons, so we fall off to make another attempt. The second time we appear to have plenty of forward way, but still are unable to come about, so we fall off again. Getting good headway again on the third try, it's close, but to make sure, I back the main, holding the sheet to keep the sail full, so it helps push us around onto the starboard tack. After I release the main sheet, my brother has to go forward to free the jib sheet, which has become fouled on its traveler.
Now we fall off to run before the wind, loosening the sheets to adjust to this new heading. Actually moving a deal faster on this heading than we did before while close hauled. Still we roll and ride the swells, driving forward, leaving a foamy wake behind. Unfortunately, my camera's mic doesn't have a windscreen, so there's more sound of wind than there should be, especially when the camera is aimed in certain directions. In the future, I'll have to look into a way of preventing this distortion. The pencil is full, the lazy jacks flap loosely against the canvas. the mainmast on the forward edge of the cabin, we clearly hear the leather padded jaw of the gaff rubbing against the mainmast as we roll slowly side to side, giving that wonderful characteristic creaking, groaning sound so familiar to deep water sailors on wooden boats, and unknown to those whose boats are made of synthetic materials or metal, to say nothing of those who travel on power boats. A plow is slung below the starboard whisker shroud, its chain running through a chalk on the bowsprit, wrapped around the winch, then cinched tight to the bit post. The chain then leads to a heavy anchor line, coiled on deck, ready for easy access. 
The large Kedge anchor behind the winch is a storm anchor. Its anchor line is below in the forecastle, its bitter end tied to the bit post below decks, the free end ready to be fed on deck if the storm anchor is needed. The Connecticut shore is now visible through the haze and we see that we have been set a good deal to the west of our destination by the current. So we alter course, falling off until we're running directly before the wind, letting the sheets out to allow the main and mizzen to fill completely. The jib is blanketed on such a course so it doesn't fill. We encounter a riptide with more turbulent seas until we pass through the disturbance. We are now at some risk of a jibe, so we bring the mizzen across, sailing wing and wing, completely blocking the jib but giving us the best use of the wind behind us. This is a deceptive course. We seem to be nearly still, but actually are making very good speed. Now passing Duck Island roads and soon can see both jetties near Duck Island and the beacons at the end of each. Harbor is just to the east of the easternmost jetty, which we round before heaving to, lowering sail and heading toward home port. After picking up the mooring lines and making fast fore and aft, a tricky maneuver unless tide and current are favorable, the sail covers are put on and we make ready to go ashore. Pinch is tied alongside to avoid entanglement while mooring and then to make it easier to get aboard her for the row back ashore. One last look to make sure all is ready before leaving.